join, in up, join us in the call to worship. Today, we gather around God's table from near and far. We are the people of God. Though we differ in, differ in language, custom, and tradition. We are brothers and sisters in Christ. For there is one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. We are one in God's spirit. We are one together. We remember our Lord Jesus. For we are the people of redemption. He gave himself up for us so we could be reconciled to God. Come, let us worship the God of our salvation. Our hymn is Let Us Break Bread Together. Join me in the opening prayer. Jesus prayed that we might be one, one in spirit, one in mission, in union and communion with each other and with you. Today, God, we confess our failure in accomplishing unity as we set aside yet another day to remind ourselves of the task. On this World Communion Sunday, give us eyes to recognize your reflection in the eyes of Christians everywhere. Give us a mind to accept and celebrate our differences. Give us a heart big enough to love your children everywhere. We thank you for setting a table with space enough for us all. Amen. Our Psalter reading today is from Psalm 36. Your steadfast love, O Lord, extends to the heavens, your faithfulness to the clouds, your righteousness is like the mighty mountains. Your judgments are like the great deep. O oh Lord, humans and animals, you save. O oh God, how precious is your steadfast love. All people may take refuge in the shadow of your wings. You feast on the abundance of your house, and you give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light, we do see light. O oh, continue your steadfast love to those who know you and your salvation to the upright of heart. On our bended knees we 
we pray in compassion on this day for all nations in distress that your mercy we impress that their leaders need our plea set their shackled children free free to praise thee in the sun that the scattered nations love as one on our bending knees we pray in compassion on this day for all nations in distress that your mercy we impress that their leaders need our plea set their shackled children free free to worship free to pray on this world communion day Good morning and welcome to Church on the Couch. On this Sunday, October 3rd, it is the uh, first Sunday of October and it is World Communion Sunday. It is the Sunday when Christian churches across the globe all share in the Lord's Supper. It's something that has always um, impressed me and amazed me to think that all of Christ's churches are lined up at the table today receiving uh, that gift of grace. Friends, on this Sunday, uh, I welcome uh, to the service our uh, organist and um, choir director, Sue Candy, and uh, Martha Wilbur, who's our liturgist today, and uh, Lisa Kisselstein, who's providing special music. And um, you just um, received the blessing of music from Diana Gardner, uh, who was able to do special music for us today, uh, but is not able to be with us for the entire service. Friends, uh, join your hearts with mine and let us offer both our joys and concerns to God this morning in our morning prayer. Let us pray. God of blessing and grace, Gather us in, gather us in this day from a variety of places to this place, to this place of worship that for us on the couch is, is located in a variety of places, but it's this one place, this place where you welcome us in to this time of worship. On this day when churches from all across the globe receive bread in the name of Christ and cup in the name of Christ and take it together as a, as a cup of blessing and a uh, offering of the bread of heaven. We're reminded that no matter where we are and no matter how many different places uh, we come from and cultures and uh, our, our politics may be different, our uh, occupations are different, we're all united in you. We come to the same table invited by you. Lord God, you know the prayers of your people this day. Be with all of those who are struggling this day with illness, including uh, COVID as it continues to rear its ugliness. Be with all those who are uh, healing, with those who are preparing for surgery and returning from it and be with the caregiver be with all of those who uh, are it's their vocation and be with those who are at home caring for loved ones be with the one who goes and gets groceries who runs uh, errands the one who brings folks to uh, doctor's offices Each one plays such an important role 
in our emotional and our physical well-being. And Lord God, we pray for each one of us. Be with us this day. May we know your presence in the midst of, of our work life, our prayer life, our worship life, and our, and our recreational life. Lord God, may we know you this day. May we know you, the one who goes before us, the one who calls us by name. Lord God, we pray all of these things in the name of Christ who taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. lesson today is in two parts. First, we're going to hear from Mark 2, verses 15 through 17. And as he sat at dinner in Levi's house, many tax collectors and sinners were also sitting with Jesus and his disciples, for there were many who followed him. When the scribes of the Pharisees saw that he was eating with sinners and tax collectors, they said to his disciples, why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? When Jesus heard this, he said to them, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick, 
I have come to call on, not the righteous, but the sinners. Our second gospel lesson is from Matthew 26, verses 26 through 30. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, you will never drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung the hymn, they went up and went out to the Mount of Olives. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us, fall fresh on each one of us gathered here, so that both speaker and hearer will know your will for us today. Amen. A prayer that I've been saying at meals since I was very young goes like this. Come Lord Jesus, be our guest. Let which thou has given us be blessed. Or let this food to us be blessed. It's a nice prayer because it me, it frames mealtime for me and it reminds me to invite Jesus to lunch or dinner. And just for a minute, I pause and I say Jesus' name and somehow a mealtime is more special than any other time of the day. I didn't always think of it this way, but isn't it neat to think that Jesus is a guest at every meal? No wonder my parents always said, keep your elbows off the table or don't slurp your soup because there's always a guest in the house. A guest does elevate the occasion, doesn't it? Whether it's refining our table manners or using tablecloths in China, because we're inviting someone special into our regular routine. Growing up at my house, we knew that a guest was coming because the plates were different. Instead of our regular plates from the kitchen, we ate on special plates on the good china that we kept in our dining room. And usually in addition to dinner, there were appetizers. Having a guest at the dinner table changed the meal from something ordinary, everyday occurrence to something special. Then as I thought about how special this meal how special it is to have guests at a meal, and especially to invite Jesus to our meal through a simple table blessing. I started to think about today and the meal that we will share today, this time of Holy Communion that not only do we share in, but churches from all around the globe will participate in on this World Communion Sunday. And I realized that we're not the host of this meal. We don't extend the invitation for guests to join us, even Jesus, because we're the guests. We are the guests. And Jesus is the host. It is Jesus that invites us to the table. Of course, on some level, we already know this. Every time we take communion, we receive an invitation that clearly says Christ our Lord invites to the table all who need forgiveness, all who seek to be in relationship with Jesus and with one another. It's Jesus' table. It's not ours. Jesus is the host and we're the guest. And while I know I know it, I sometimes forget it. It's easy for us to think that we are inviting others to join us or even inviting Jesus in to bless us in the giving and receiving of this meal. This piece of bread is called the host to remind us that Jesus who invites us in and it's Jesus who is entering in, 
through the power of the Holy Spirit and the gift of grace. So think for a minute about the host, about this one who invites us to his table, who sets a special plate at the table for us, who welcomes you and welcomes me. Now think about being the guest. It's nice to be invited. And it, isn't it especially nice to know that they're using the special plates because you're at the meal? Everything is elevated a little or a lot because there is an invited guest at the meal. The guest doesn't invite, the guest attends. The guest doesn't prepare, the guest participates. The guest doesn't serve, the guest is served. And you're it. You are Jesus' guest. And I am Jesus' Jesus's guest at the table. So often we think of church in term, terms of members and visitors or non-members, those familiar with the goings on and those not. But we're all visitors to the communion table. No one has the inside track and no one is left out of the invitation. The hymn, Come Sinners to the Gospel Feast, is about us. Let every soul be Jesus' guest. You need not one be left behind, for God hath bid all humankind. And whether we take communion in our pews, as we have done throughout the pandemic, or if we come in a line and take it by intinction, as we have done in the past, or if we come to the communion rail, we always come as the guest. All different people from different places, from different walks of life, with different things on their minds and different things on their hearts. All are invited to the same table, for the same feast, by the same person in Christ. I can't remember the bishop's name, but he told the story of how as a young boy he would sit in the choir and he would watch as people filed down the aisles to the communion rail and then they would kneel next to one another and they'd be lined up elbow to elbow all taking communion together and from the left and from that loft he took special notice of their shoes it was only the shoes that made them look different as they shared in the same cup and from the same loaf a farmer with dry mud on his shoes was next to the lawyer. The high heels poked out in the line next to the well-worn shoes of the postman. This little boy who would someday become a preacher and then be elected bishop didn't just see unity at the table, but he saw community at the table, defined by their shoes and united by this common meal. Each one guests of Jesus Christ who invited them to the table. I don't know about you, but understanding myself as the guest at Jesus's table is even more exciting to me than the prospect of me inviting Jesus to my meal. He thought to choose me. I'm a guest in Jesus's house at Jesus's table at a meal prepared for me by Jesus. And next to me is you. Another invited guest, another person handpicked by Jesus to receive this meal. And then to the left and to the right, as far as the eyes can see, are guests of Jesus. This is especially poignant to me on a day when I know that the whole world is coming to the table. The world. People who we see as allies but people that we may see as stranger, people that we may call enemy. Today, we call them guests. Yes, our shoes are different. Some may not even be wearing any, but there we are, each walking toward the same table, coming to the same rail, invited by the same Christ, to take bread 
and to take cup. The body of Christ. The bread of heaven. The blood of Christ. The cup of salvation. This gift from Jesus. This gift of Jesus. This gift transcends us and it transforms us. This gift of grace, this gift of love that can only come from God that we neither deserve nor can we earn. Yet communion is one of those channels of grace. It's one of those places where we're surprised by this incredible love given by the one who loves us first when we were yet sinners. And he calls us to the feast as his guest. We don't decide who sits with us, who we kneel next to. It isn't up to us who eats with us because it's not our table. It's not our meal. We come to the table because we're invited to the table. We are the guest at the table and Jesus is the one who invites us. Amen. We celebrate World Communion Sunday today as followers of Jesus. Churches all over the world are sharing in cup and in bread today. Now, I know that one of the uh, drawbacks of Church on the Couch is that we cannot have communion together. But we did want to celebrate this day together because it's important for us to be reminded of the one who invites us, who calls us to the table. So if you do not have uh, consecrated elements, perhaps you do have a piece of bread and perhaps you have a cup of juice and you are reminded of this, of the outward symbol of this inward grace, this uh, transformation that becomes for us the body and blood of Christ so that we may be transformed as followers of Christ, that our eyes may be opened and that our ears may be sharpened as we receive and understand this gift of love that's given to us from the one who invites us, the, the, the bread and the cup. On this day, we share in this litany of Holy Communion and we hear first uh, from Lisa Kisselstein, who provides special music for us on this day. <laughs> Thank you. 
Hear this litany for World Communion Sunday. In the midst of uncertain times, it is a good and right thing to remind ourselves not just what could be, but what will be. We worship the God who created time and whose promises stand firm forever. The scriptures tell us that God's eternal kingdom will contain a great crowd that no one could number. They are from every nation, tribe, people, language. We worship the God who created every nation, tribe, people, and language out of love, and so God's promise of grace is offered to all. Following his death and resurrection, which we remember and celebrate through the practice of communion, and in his final words to us on earth, Jesus commissioned us to go and make disciples of all nations. We worship the God who calls us from the sidelines and invites us into the work of the kingdom. One of God's blessings is the opportunity to join in the fulfilling of God's promises. As we break bread and we drink the cup, remind us that we do not do so in isolation. We are part of a universal and diverse church that crosses every line the world uses to divide us. We worship the God who is preparing us for the great heavenly banquet where one day we will all feast together. May our faith in God's, in God's promises inspire us to build bridges in our community, our country, and across the world. Amen.
witness to the love of God in this world, so that those to whom love is a stranger will find in you a generous friend. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.